Those couple of days where it was like 70 degrees really spoiled me. I was just hoping winter would just be like over, but... So here's what I want to do today. Let's talk about Spectrum radios. I get asked a lot why I fly Spectrum, because most pilots fly Free Sky. If you're not fully tuned in to the wonderful world of drones, Spectrum and Free Sky are two different brands of radios and receivers. And just like people like to argue about whether their Ford is better than their Chevy, people love to argue about Free Sky versus Spectrum. And for the most part, people actually agree that Free Sky is better because it has better range. It seems the general consensus is that Free Sky is better at holding signal so that you don't lose control when you're flying long distances or behind concrete or whatever. But I've always flown Spectrum and I've had great luck with it. I usually fly with a Spectrum DX9, which is a pretty sweet radio. It actually has two transmitting antennas, so it theoretically should have really good range and coverage. However, it's currently out of commission. We'll talk about why in a little bit. So I've been borrowing my friend Emily's DX6 for a while. All the Bandoland flying that you saw in my last couple of videos was done with this, which is uh, an inferior radio, and you saw us flying through all sorts of buildings, around buildings, just huge areas, and having no problems, even with this. I flew all day with no problem until, actually, to be honest, I did crash and one of my antennas on one of the diversity receivers got cut. And then after that, I started having a few little issues if I flew too far or behind too many things. But honestly, even with one antenna chopped off, at one point I was standing on top of a parking garage flying two levels below me, and I still had plenty of radio control. The video was pretty much gone though. So here's the thing. I will say that in my opinion, Spectrum is not as bad as people make it out to be. They're great radios, and now they have good receivers. So this is why I think Spectrum gets a bad rap. Um, Spectrum is owned by Horizon Hobby. They make tons of ready-to-fly aircraft from helicopters to airplanes and even now drones. So almost everyone who flies probably has had some Spectrum radio at some point. Most people start on Spectrum. And I think here's where the problem starts is a lot of people start their experience using Spectrum. So as they start building their custom race or freestyle drones, they may not be experienced enough to know all the do's and don'ts of proper antenna placement. It is very important that your receiver antennas aren't blocked by carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is a conductive material. Conductive materials like metal and carbon fiber block RF signals. So if your antenna is buried inside of your carbon fiber frame, you're way more likely to have reception issues. Also with diversity receivers, meaning that there's two antennas and it's always looking for the strongest signal, you want to have them positioned so that their orientation is always good relative to your trip. A good rule of thumb is they should be at 90 degrees to each other. I don't even technically have 90 degrees. Mine are more at like 45. I should really like bend this one down, but it looks cool like this. And this has been working fine. It just would technically be better to bend it down. So I honestly think that's a big part is that people starting out don't know all the best practices for mounting their antennas and then they have problems and then they blame Spectrum because there's this whole hype train around hating on Spectrum. And to be honest, I have had issues with radio connectivity and it was for two reasons. One, when I was starting out, I did exactly what I'm talking about here where I didn't know better and I was like taping my antennas down onto the carbon fiber or it was kind of inside the frame and so that's where I had issues. And the other bad thing I was doing is I was using non-genuine Spectrum receivers. So there are receivers that are not made by Spectrum but are made to be compatible with Spectrum's protocol which is called DSMX or DSM2. So when I first started out, I was using receivers made by a company called Orange RX. Stay away from Orange RX. I had horrible luck with that. They are not a robust receiver. They will not give you the performance that you need for flying race drones, especially when you start going behind concrete and stuff like that. It sort of didn't matter when I first started out because most of my flying was in a big open park area. And then as I started trying to go further and behind trees, then I started having big issues 
Then I found out about another knockoff receiver, Lemon RX, and I used that for a long time. I mean, I and I had really good luck with Lemon. In fact, I'll go as far to say that for a period of time, Lemon RX was better than genuine Spectrum receivers because the only receiver that Spectrum made that was really the size that we're looking for and also operated on a serial protocol which provides for a higher speed are these satellites. So these old-fashioned Spectrum satellites were never meant to be used as a primary receiver but that's what we were doing for a while and even though they have two antennas they're not actually diversity. One of these antennas is just like a ground or something so these do not provide for a great connection but they operate on a really high speed. So anyway Lemon came out with a receiver that was based on the Spectrum satellites but provided true diversity and I used that for a long time with great luck. And now in more recent times Spectrum has finally come out with a genuine high performing name brand Spectrum receiver with diversity made for FPV race drones. This is the main receiver I use. I'll link it in the description. It is the Spectrum DSMX FPV Racing Serial Receiver. It has diversity. It has performed extremely well. I now no longer use lemons because this has provided more reliable performance. I really like it. So now the question is, when I'm using genuine Spectrum FPV race receivers with two antennas that are in good condition and they're out of the carbon fiber and oriented at an angle to each other and everything is great, do I ever have lockouts or fail safes as they're often called? Do I ever lose radio control of my drone? Yeah, but not at times when I wouldn't call it reasonable. Let me explain what that means. I've never not been able to fly somewhere that someone who's not using Spectrum and they're maybe using Futaba or FreeSky or another thing, I've, they've never been able to fly somewhere that I couldn't. Almost never. Um, the times when I have lost radio link are when we are trying to really push what we're doing. For example, I was flying from inside my car, which is a metal box, which is really not good for letting radio signals out, sitting inside my car on the top floor of a parking garage and me and Jeff were flying along the parking lot at ground level and when I got to the edge of the parking deck so now I'm three floors below myself at the outer edge and I'm inside a car yeah I had radio problems I think that's a pretty reasonable time to have radio problems, but we were pushing. I mean, we were trying to do these really long lines and the parking lots were empty and the parking decks were empty, so I knew it was okay to kind of push my luck there. And So like, yeah, lockouts happen, but I've seen lockouts happen to Jeff when he was using Futaba and lockouts happen to Jeff when he's using Free Sky because we really push where we're flying and fly with a lot of interference because that's the whole fun of doing these freestyle drone videos where you're like in a thing. and. But if I have to be like real for a second and provide a real simple answer as to which has better radio link performance between Spectrum and Free Sky, I'll say Free Sky. If you take the aggregate of what the community has experienced in using these two radios, it's really just not worth it to try and argue that Spectrum is as good or better because there's always going to be more people that have better experience than Free Sky, so fine. Free Sky is a little bit better. I will also definitely say that everything that I'm talking about where your antennas need to be mounted properly and need to be in good condition, Free Sky definitely seems to be more robust to that. I've seen people fly Free Sky with the antenna completely buried in carbon fiber or even completely chopped off and I have no idea how that receiver is still getting a signal. There's some real witchcraft with the Free Sky receivers, so there is certainly something to be said for the robustness of free sky. It seems much more resilient to everything having to be just right. I mean, in general, you really should have uncut antennas away from the carbon fiber at a good angle. To, you should have all those things done properly. I'm just saying that free sky really can handle a bigger margin of error. Regardless of this video, regardless of what I say, regardless of what anyone says, the you know, argument over what radio people use. It's just gonna go on. People just like to kind of argue about that stuff and I guess that's kind of the fun of it. And it's not that big of a deal, so it's whatever. I'm just trying to provide my perspective that uh, Spectrum has worked really well for me. Um, so I guess what I would say is, if you use Spectrum, 
Don't let anyone pressure you into having to switch. Similarly, if you're on FreeSky, I'm definitely not trying to get you to switch. If you have a great performing radio, awesome. Keep it, keep on flying. For now, I like Spectrum. Will I ever switch? Maybe. I don't care that much either way, so I just, I like what I've got now. Maybe I'll make the switch. Anyways, I hope this was helpful. For the rest of the day, I kind of want to get some flying in, and since we're talking about this whole Spectrum thing, let's try to get a failsafe today. Remember when it was like 70 degrees in February? Pepperidge Farms remembers. It's actually a Girl Scout cookie, not Pepperidge Farms. So I just got to a spot to do some flying and do some Spectrum experiments. On the way here, made a detour to stop by the post office just to pick up some bills. And to my surprise, I had a letter. This is like my first fan mail. I feel weird calling it like fan mail. This is my first letter from someone who watches my channel. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of psyched. Dude, thanks Steve for writing me. This was pretty awesome actually. So you got yourself a Vortex 150. A few people have suggested that as a potentially good starter, ready to fro ready to fry, ready to fly quad. So I might look into that at some point and you got your remote and you got your charger. So awesome that you're getting started and I know you're gonna enjoy this hobby and everything. And you're also asking about gimbal protectors, which the timing on this is so funny because I'm talking about my transmitter today. So gimbal protectors fits kind of uh, serendipitously Lee. well. The gimbal protectors I use are actually 3D printed, but they have a similar design at Excel and I'll put a link in the description. It is blowy and snowy, well like a little flurry e, but not the greatest flying weather, but at least the car keeps me warm. But that reminds me, I just remembered I had another failsafe or loss of radio link scenario at this spot, and it was another time where I was sitting in the car, actually parked almost right here, and during a line I got just a little bit behind the building and it locked out. So let's recreate that real quick. behind the building, locked out. Oh, oh, that is so cold, okay. Whew. All right, we're gonna see if I can make it any further around if I stand outside the car. Ugh. Of course, of course it would lock out right as I'm coming up to the edge of a concrete thing. <laughs> uh, damage isn't too bad though, just gonna bend a prop back. All right, we're gonna do one more little experiment. I'm gonna position my antenna out the window so I can still sit in the car. And there's pretty much a straight shot all along the back of these buildings. And we're just gonna see how far we can go. I've got an app that'll actually measure distance based on We are locked out, but I wouldn't fly that far anyway, because as you can see from the DVR, the video is pretty much gone. I'm gonna drive over and get that. I found it over here. So basically this app that I downloaded that's like for tracking your running distance said that I moved 321.7 meters, which is just under 0.2 miles. I'd say a little under a quarter mile is a fair result to get. And yeah, like, could longer range be handy? Yeah, so, and do free sky radios provide longer range? Yeah, maybe. I kind of want to do a shootout or something with Jeff, so I'll try and do that. Um, but I guess my point is, 
I'm happy with the performance I got. It could always be better. Um, and I hope this was informative. I'm not team Spectrum. I'm not team Free Sky. I, you know, I'm team ain't care really. I just want stuff that works and Spectrum works for me. And of course I love the feeling of the gimbals more than the gimbals that come with Free Sky radios. But yeah, there's lots of upgradable gimbals available now. So things are constantly changing. I'm sure Spectrum is gonna come out with new technology and so is Free Sky. So things are only gonna get better. Okay, I hope this was helpful. How do you um, fly?